Hi, today I want to talk about the paper Meta Gradient Reinforcement Learning from Zhong Wenxu, Hello von Nassel, and David Silver from DeepMind. On a high level, this paper is about meta learning, or rather, in a reinforcement learning algorithm, how to learn the hyperparameters of such an algorithm using uh, gradient descent, basically. So, in a reinforcement learning algorithm, there are many um, hyperparameters that are like uh, fixed from the beginning, and that could be a discount uh, factor gamma or like uh, in, uh, there's, there's many other um, different, so many other different hyperparameters that determine, for instance, when we calculate the values, the target, va what, what a target value is going to be. So for instance, here we have a, an expression that uh, give us the target value that we're trying to approximate, for instance, an algorithm like DQN, and that's given from the sum of the reward, but we never sum only the rewards. We, we, we put some hyperparameters in them. So one of those parameters would be it would, would be gamma. And the other hyperparameter would be like, um, so again, in an algorithm like DQN, you you have different choices when when calculating the, re the real value, right? Calculate the real value by just taking one step, recording, see what kind of reward, uh, what is the value of the reward that the agent collects, and then the next the next state that you reach, you approximate the, the, the reward that you're gonna get after that state we just have approximated the approximation that the value network gives you of that state. But you don't, have, like in DQN on the first paper, I guess, you would just done with a once, like you do one, just one step in your paper, just one step, but you can do it with n steps or like an arbitrary amount of steps. So what is done in some of the, uh, in some um, other papers, for instance, in the PPU algorithm, uh, we take a, a combination uh, or geometric combination of all the, of these like uh, values that are calculated by using different ends. So if you have a trajectory and then that trajectory is going to end, we take any possible end between one and the, the the size of the trajectory or the number of steps in that trajectory, and we take the we combine them ge geometrically, and that gives us the the value. So there's a basically these two parameters that can determine the true value that we use, the, and then we can use a neural network to approximate that value right so um this two parameters are gonna what we the the papers deal this with so these two parameters are gonna be learned during during together with the parameters of the network uh, via um, stochastic uh, gradient descent yeah and um, a, a few words on why that is a, a, a good idea is that um so these two parameters especially the gamma is kind of factor depends much on the, so for a given algorithm, it depends much on the problem that we're tackling with that algorithm. If it, if it is a good idea to use that, uh, the value is dependent on the problem, right? Because different problems have different reward structure. So the fact, if we choose to be very uh, short-sighted or very long-sighted uh, or with, the, with gamma, so we decide to consider like, like the reward of the states coming um, after visiting a particular state and it, include the reward is that this is uh, uh, collected after reaching a certain state into the value of that particular state, how much weight are we going to give to this? So gamma is exactly what gamma does, right? And um, so each each problem is going to have a different preference, let's say, or there's going to be different gamma values that are going to be, they're going to be optimal just depending on if we want the agent to, to be very short-sighted or, or far sided, and, uh, and and the same is true for for algorithms like lambda. So it changes with the problem, but not only that, it also changes. It is uh, it is found in some of the literature that they um, they present here. They it, it found beneficial in some uh, in for some problems to first start with a specific or first start a training with a specific value, say for gamma, and then raise it during training. Right. So at the beginning the agent is going to be very, very short-sighted. And then as you move gamma, as it learns to behave well in that in that world, you raise gamma and then it makes it like on that basis, you, it's a kind of a curriculum learning, uh, let's say, approach to this. So it, it is beneficial to, to, to modulate it during training. Not only that, but it can also be the case that this, this power parameters could be like um, state dependent. So for a particular state, the network learns to have a very short gamma. So in this, uh, for this particular state, you should uh, avoid, for instance, considering any reward of this state 
when uh, in uh, in uh, in calculating the value downstream, right? So there's all this different um, different data or different evidence that points out the uh, at learning or uh, the fact that it would be a good idea to learn hyperparameters during training. So how it is done? The key idea here is the is uh, using the chain rule. You would basically if we have the the hyperparameters of a particular algorithm. We want to first calculate, so the hyperparameters, um, when we do the update function, so we calculate theta prime, we know that like theta prime is dependent, or is calculated by summing theta to the update function. And this update function is dependent of the trajectory. We, we So the data basically, theta, which are like the previous, uh, the pre previous parameters of the network and the hyperparameters, right? So what is done here using the chain rule is first we calculate the, the um, the derivative with respect to the with the parameter theta of the of, of, of the cost function j, and then we multiply it by the derivative of theta prime uh, with respect to the hyperparameters. And here is, is how we calculate the hyperparameter. It's, it's a bit tricky how we calculate the derivative theta prime to um, with respect to 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 the hyperparameter mu, and this is done by differentiating this expression here, the update rule with respect to mu, and we get an expression here. Here in this particular paper, the, the third term, so uh, this one, is uh, the third term is um, is ignored, uh, as it could, it could be a challenge to compute in practice, and this, the, the whole thing is reduced to, to, to this expression t, so when z is equal to theta prime divided by uh, d theta divided by d mu. Um, <clears throat> So, and here we have another coefficient or another hyper hyper parameter, if you will. Um, so this paper also relies pretty, uh, relies on the idea of an online cross-validation, which, which means we first, so the, the roadmap of this paper, if you will, is by first um, calculating the, so updating hyperparameters going so from theta to theta prime and calculating this, uh, the, the derivative of theta prime with respect to the hyperparameters. We then collect another sample uh, of trajectory, uh, another trajectory from the environment, uh, this time keeping the hyperparameter constant with a specific value, say one. And, and on, on a different set of data, again, by keeping the hyperparameters constant, we then, uh, with the new cal newly calculated uh, parameters of the network uh, theta prime, we're gonna calculate uh, J prime, which is the, the the cost, the validation cost. Say yeah, the cost, and then this is the expression that goes here. And by multiplying one, so the derivative of one, then gets a differentiated, of course, to get this term here. Then by multiplying them together, we get the we get the the expression or the derivative of J prime with respect to the hyperparameter mu. And then we uh, once we get those, so here, since we can re rewrite z, so the derivative uh, d, d theta prime with respect to mu as z, which is a thing that we say, and one pretty important thing to, to point out is that the, the derivative or the expression d theta prime with respect to d mu is dependent of the same quantity or d theta for the previously, calc for previously uh, calculated um, parameters of the network, right, d theta. So this can be done iter iteratively uh, by summing, summing them up, and then it's composed by the, the previous derivative plus the derivative of the update rule, the f, right? And then this is the result in z, and then these two things can be multiplied. So this will be the same expression as this one, right? And multiplied by the by another learning rate for the, only for the hyperparameters, given the delta mu, which is like the Delta, you're gonna move the hyperparameters. So here, for instance, they go through a particular example, an, an example uh, using something akin or a, D, a DQN algorithm with an, only a value network, and we're trying to predict this value, uh, the appro approximation of the value. And to be clear, the network or these hyperparameters are gonna to have to be adjusted during training to make it easier for the agent or for the target network, for the value network to approximate the the value, right? 
So for instance, if we add this particular algorithm, the loss would be the difference between the target value and the approximation of the value of the square loss. We then take it like uh, as we normally do, as it's normally done in this case, we take the derivative of this quantity with respect to the parameters of the network theta and get this quantity here. And uh, <clears throat> then we know, we know what the update rule is and the update rule is just this derivative or the derivative of the cost function with respect to the parameters uh, of the network uh, multiplied by the, by the um, learning rate, which yields again this expression here which is again differentiated with respect to mu to give this expression right here. Then, and this, this, this right here give us, um, give us this expression that if you plug it in the, in the, in the procedure that we described uh, before, would give this one here, this, uh, this guy. What you would do next is once you like collecting a new trajectory, uh, tau uh, prime <coughs> to cut, uh, keeping the the, um, the hyperparameters um, gamma prime equal them to zero, not to one in this case, and calculate the loss with the new ca newly calculated parameters theta uh, theta prime, the loss of these new parameters, keeping the hyperparameters cost constant, and this is going to give us here this this quantity right here which multiplied together with uh, the previously calculated quantity z prime is going to give us the update of the hyperparameters okay so another thing to point out in this paper they also um they also uh, point out a problem of, of this thing when you learn the hyper hyperparameters during training it might be the case that, that your network has problem keeping up because you're training it with a specific value function or a, a value, or the true value, the, value the, the target value that has some specific rules or some, with some specific hyperparameters, like with a specific gamma. And then as, as the network is learning to approximate the, the true value that, that can be calculated in this way, you're going to move it because it's going to change as well. And to avoid that, they also include or they give to the network the, the, the values of the, of the, um, of the hyperparameters right now. So he's gonna, the network is going to learn to use them as best as he can to like, approximate, approximate the, the true value as a function of these hyperparameters. So they're going to include them and, they can, and it, we're always going to give them as a change in, in real time. And uh, here to validate this idea, they created a, a few toy examples. So some Markov reward processes where like, uh, for instance, in this one, so to one transition, the, the reward that is collected by the agent to that transition is a deterministic function and is always like a one, let's say. And on the other, on the other transition or like um, that are alternated to the, this deterministic transition, then the reward is simply uh, sample randomly from a Gaussian distribution. And um, so for instance, here when calculating the, and in this, in this particular two toy examples, um, they, they made it so that the, the reward, or no, these two other parameters can be state dependent. So for each state, they can assume a different value. And if, you, uh, if you're able to do that, then the straight strategy in this case would be to, to put a very, very low gamma for this uh, stochastic reward transition. So like uh, when estimating the value, those are gonna have no influence for determining the true value of a specific st uh, state because uh, by including them, you make, it, you make, for the, you make uh, um, the job harder for the agent to predict the value of a specific um, state. So you, you exclude them and in doing so, you only consider those deterministic and in this way, it's going to be very easy for the agent of the or the value network to find the real value of that state of of, of a state which uh, after it was visited that it included it went on visiting all these other states right so it's going to exclude the reward from the, from those st states in the in the computation of the reward so if you if you want to see here so for instance here gamma would be close to zero for rewards taken from a stochastic transition. 
And there's a similar toy example, which is related to uh, more to Lambda, but I won't get into it. So this is how, this is how the, they included the, the hyperparameters in the, in, the, in the network. And they also validate this, uh, this new way of updating hyperparameters along online as a training, um, as, as, uh, together with the training of the network. Also on Atari, uh, yeah, proving that is a, a, a valid and helpful way or to, to, to train these, uh, the hyperparameters jointly with normal parameters.